Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this one, I'm showing you guys an anti witch base that I've built. Uh, it's built to defend against this witch healer strategy. Some people call it witch slap, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's the uh, the witches going around the outside, the uh, king, queen, bowler, kill squad going up the middle. And it's very effective. It's definitely the most popular strategy at Town Hall 9 right now. So this video is going to be all about defending it. And the base you see right here is my anti-witch base. Now it did very well. I'm going to break down the setup in just a moment. I want to start off with one attack on it. Then we'll just take a look at the setup. I'll walk you guys through each element of the base and how it defends witches. Not just for this base, but for a base you might build on your own. The principles of defending witches that you guys want to know. And then we'll also take a look at a few more attacks after this one. But I wanted to show one attack out of the gate just to give you guys a taste of what this base uh, is all about. So you can see um, this one relatively close. It's a very difficult strategy to defend. That's what I found out very quickly when I started trying to build a base to defend it. Very difficult base. Um, this is a Town Hall 9 base. You saw a Town Hall 10 Town Hall, but besides the Town Hall, it's a Town Hall 9 base. So don't worry, everything is Town Hall 9 level pretty much. And uh, you can see here the, um, the kill squad kind of peters out right towards the end. The, uh, the troops going around the outside can't quite get the job done. The queen and the king are both about to go down. So it works out pretty nicely in this one. Uh, we'll take a look at a few different angles it was attacked on. Um, because as you guys know, uh, the strategy is basically used um, with the witches being dropped in two corners and then the kill squad going on one side of the base and the, uh, the witch squads going around the outside. So you can do it basically on all four uh, sides of a base. Typically the kill squad doesn't enter on a corner. It's too difficult to funnel. I tried that on this base, but um, nothing goes in the middle of the base uh, if you try it on a corner to enter on the corner. So we'll take a look at some different variations, but for now, let's uh, pause for a moment and just talk about how this base is built. Okay, so here is the base. I'd consider it a very good Town Hall 9 anti-witch base, but even in making this video, I've learned a lot, and there's definitely some changes I would make looking back that I can share with you guys so you can make your bases even better than this one because all bases eventually will be three-starred, and uh, this is no exception. So anyway, talking about how it's set up, um, two things you want to set up to defend against are the core kill squad coming into the base, that's the one thing you want to try to defend. And then the other thing is the witch, healer, wizard tandem going around the outside of the base. So those are the two main things you want to have uh, different features to defend against. Um, talking about first the core push, um, I said in my witch attack strategy video that the, uh, the kill squad going into the core of the base the golem, the heroes, the maybe like one or two witches and the bowlers, they have to clear out the entire core just leaving like the shell of the base around the outside. So that's their job. If you can prevent them from getting one of these expos, um, it's going to be very difficult for the uh, groups going around the outside to, uh, after they meet up at the end, to come back in and get that expo. So these expos, you want to make it very difficult for the kill squad to get both of them. Uh, that's a very important aspect. So just taking a look at it, you can see you can't jump over the core right here. That's important. You don't want them to be able to drop a jump spell and go from like one side of the base to the other. The core is too thick from either direction uh, to be jumped over if you count the core as these two compartments right here. Um, giant bombs, of course, to try to kill some bowlers. You can also put all four giant bombs on the outside. Um, that's one strategy you can do. So for example, um, move this out and see if you can fit another giant bomb right here because the only thing that will certainly kill a group of witches going around the outside is two giant bombs at once. So the only problem is you very make it much easier to use hogs on you if you put your giant bombs, all four of them, on the outside of the base like that. But it's a sacrifice you might want to make. It depends on what you're trying to do with your base. But I have two of them on the inside. Um, they can also go in the expo compartment. That would be even better for defending hogs. But um, two in the core is never a bad idea because they can take out those bowlers, um, especially when there's no healers uh, on those troops in the core. So um, other things, though... Uh, take a look at the um, the air defenses um, because they're actually more important than you think for killing healers. And one very, very important thing I can't stress enough are these seeking air mines. Put them 
towards the outside of your base. You can have them near the air defenses to still be able to, you know, hit Lava Hounds as they come in to try to break up the Laloon attacks, but they have to be at least um, very close to that outer wall because they can be very effective at killing healers. And on another base uh, similar to this one, if you wanted to make it, you could have all four air defenses spread out. That way you could put a Seeking Air Mine on each side of the base so you know that the healers are definitely going to hit it as they're coming around the outside, at least one healer is going to die no matter which way they come at the base. So that's a very effective thing you can do. Now on this base, the, the uh, Seeking Air Mines are stacked together. Um, not quite as effective, but that's just kind of how the base was built. So it, it, you can get two healers if you're lucky, but oftentimes we'll just get one as they come around. But the Seeking Air Mines are important. Make sure your, air, your sweepers don't push the healers too far away. You want them getting up close to that wall where the air defense can start taking them out if they come at the wrong angle and they'll hit the seeking air mines because the healers once they go down it's much easier to kill the witches uh, but we have these little kill zones right here for the witches going around the outside of the base we have the teslas to kind of just get that quick dps so after the witches hit these bombs all the skeletons around them will be dead they'll be very exposed hopefully the splash damage alone will kill them with the combination of the wizard tower the giant bomb and the small bombs and um, the wizard tower as well but if not if they're very low the teslas can sometimes pick them off really quick because once the witch triggers the giant bomb all the skeletons in the area will die it'll be exposed a lot of dps at once can kill them even if the healers are still left up now this base also didn't have any spring traps on the outside that's another thing i regret i a few spring traps are not a bad idea because they will fling a bowler or more likely an entire witch off the off the base now make sure you put them by like a mortar or something that way if the person uses hogs there's still a chance their hog will hit them um, but uh, these spring traps are very effective around the outside of the base An another thing I would change if I had the option um, of changing but a lot of this is hindsight I'm going through the process of building and kind of looking back now uh, what else do we have Oh, the clan castle troops. Now, this might be a little bit controversial, but I recommend a lava hound in the CC if you're trying to defend the witches. The reason is, I can see it both ways. I can see a um, a Valk baby dragon uh, CC, but from my experience in testing, the lava hound actually works better because it holds up the queen and she is one of the most powerful tools going into the base and if you can delay her by a, a lot then the king and the bowlers will go down and the queen will be exposed by the time she steps up because you want to this is another thing to defend the core push that kill squad going into the base if you can break them up so they're not all going in at once um, it can be a very good way to leave one of these expos up and make it hard for the witches around the outside of the base to do much even if they do get to the final uh, 180 around the base they have to come back in to get the rest of the defenses still inside the base so another good effective thing there um, I think that's about it though like I said I'd change a few trap placements you can be even more bold like I said put the spring traps on the outside put the seeking air mines on the outside still near an air defense so they can defend La Lune but enough to the outside that a healer will hit them um, and then those giant bombs the uh, small bombs that is all uh, good for putting on the outside to try to kill the uh, witches as they make their way around. And I like these um, skelly traps in the core on ground just to help defend, you know, distract the king, distract the queen and whatnot, make it even more difficult. You might no notice there's a bunch of storages in here. Um, these are good for holding up the kill squad. They... Um, they're going to be a little bit to the one, to one side of the kill squad as they come in, so they'll get distracted on those, and it makes it take longer for them to push through the middle of the base. So, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, let's take a look at a few more attacks on this base. Okay, so here's the next one. Um, this is an attack from the, I think the, let's take a look, yeah, bottom right side of the base. So, the first attack you guys saw at the beginning of the video was coming at it from the kind of the expo side by the wizard towers and stuff, um, either the bottom left or the top right. This is coming at it from the more flat and long side. Um, this base is kind of symmetrical, so there's two sides of every base, but this is coming at it from the, uh, the flatter side. And uh, let's see how this one shapes up. The two healers at the bottom kind of peel off onto the kill squad, which can happen. 
Um, that definitely weakens the attack a little bit. Um, but that being said, everything is moving in. The first rage is down. This attack has a heal spell because um, sometimes you bring two rages, sometimes a rage and a heal, but almost always two jumps to get through the base. But anyway, the troops moving forward actually gets very deep into the base there with the kill squad. The king uh, just got up to the CC right now. But right there, the queen is on the lava hound, which is slowing down the kill squad. A skelly spell on the expo, but the expo doesn't look like it's going to go down there. And um, Lava Hound pops right there. The poison goes down, but it still takes a little while for the queen to clear all that stuff out. That really um, delayed that push through the base. Granted, both expos are going down, but the bottom left uh, uh, witches did not make their way around the base. They died very quickly um, because their healers peeled off. And uh, the top right is still going strong, but the queen is all alone in the core. You can see she even missed that second jump because of how long she was stuck on that Lava Hound. Like I said, it delays the queen long enough, that Lava Hound in the CC, to the point where everything dies in front of her and she has to face the base on her own. Those two cannons right there will take her out. Then from there, it's just these witches. And we'll fast forward because it does take a while. Those witches can go for a long time with the healers on them. But right there, as the corner is turned, that air defense is going to be key because it'll take out those healers um, and then they'll step up, hit the giant bombs, and that'll be it. So anyway, that will be that for this attack on the base and uh, we'll move on to the next one as soon as this last witch dies. Right there, uh, you can see a little bit of the base left up. These are always going to be somewhat close. It's difficult to have some flat fails. Um, this base in testing I was attacked... Um, like six or seven times, uh, no three stars. I was really happy about that. I think if you tried a little bit harder, um, if the attacks were tweaked more, it could have been uh, a three star because any base if you attack long enough will get you the, the three star. But you know, take, taking all those attacks um, from different angles and being able to hold up, even if they were 90, 95% attacks is still very impressive. So I was happy. I'm only showing, I think, three. Uh, this is the last attack. Only three of these attacks to show just because um, some of them were kind of weird with the troops going around the outside, including this one. This actually was one of the attacks. Um, not as bad as some of the others that were just kind of flat fails. But this one, the queen goes around the outside, which almost works in the favor of the attacker. Um, had the bowlers actually walk, walk as well. It would have been better if the bowlers went in. But the Lava Hound is not engaged by the Queen, so she's free to kind of go around the outside and do damage as well with that uh, that little force going to the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, the Lava Hound gets stuck on the Golem at the top. The Witches at the top also a little bit lucky here. Um, those Witches are, have about a sliver of health at the very top of the screen, but they're still going strong. I think the Bomb Tower will take them out. And the Expo did not get taken out. And like I said, if you can make it so one of the Expos does not go down, you are in great shape because the Witches, whatever is going around the outside of the base, is going to be just melted by that expo that constant damage the weird angle the witches the queen everything goes down like i said the kill squad did not get deep enough and as a result this one does not go for a three star because uh, those witches get roasted by the expo and the other defenses around the outside so that will do it um like i said this is a very solid base you can feel free to use it to tweak it um, and I think it will defend very well against witches, at least the first few attacks. Now, I recommend you make your own base using some of the changes I noted uh, back uh, when I was talking about the base itself, because there are some very good improvements you can make, but the key things are gonna be the same. You wanna make sure that kill squad has trouble going from one side to the other, make those expos difficult to get, and uh, use those traps to your advantage around the outside of the base. Use the kill zones with the wizard towers, the Teslas, all that good stuff around the outside of the base to defend the outside push um, because you're defending two different things, the outside push as well as the push in the base with the heroes. So good luck in building your base. I hope this video helped and was kind of a good starting point for you guys. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.